In the past five to 10 years, software engineering became the hottest job in the entire job market. Everyone wanted to study computer science and join coding boot camps in hopes of landing one of the coveted positions at the prestigious big tech companies like Google, Meta, or Amazon, with the hopes of earning hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially straight out of college. What we saw was one of the hottest job markets in any industry in history. Companies were literally competing for candidates just to hire them so that their competitors could not hire them first, which led to crazy job offers given to people who basically just learned to code from some online bootcamp two weeks ago. But today, things are a bit different. Even seasoned programmers with years of experience have been laid off with companies like Twitter laying off potentially up to 80% of their workforce. And with even these people struggling to get new jobs, you can only imagine how difficult it is for beginners to land entry-level software engineering positions. So with all of this happening, I wanna revisit, is tech and software engineering still a dream job? Is it even worth going for one of these jobs anymore given how difficult it is to get one. And was tech ever a dream job in the first place or was it just overhyped because of how easy it was to earn a bunch of money and get rich fast? So to understand this, we first need to sort of define what is a dream job? What does it mean for a job to be so coveted that people call it a dream job? Generally, people look at basically three things in a job that they deem a dream job. First is high pay. Not many people are dreaming of jobs that don't pay that well. Number two is prestige. As much as we don't like to admit this, as humans, we are very driven, especially as men, by prestige. We wanna be respected and admired by the people around us. And number three is lifestyle. People want a cool job, something that at least has the idea of being a cool job with like a super fancy lifestyle that they get access to because of their career. But I think for a true dream job, we should also consider two other factors. Now, first of them being, is the career rewarding? Is it enjoyable? I can tell this firsthand as someone who tried careers like banking or consulting that many people consider dream jobs. These careers are absolutely not that interesting in terms of the actual reality of the job that you're doing. One of the big reasons why tech was a dream job for me was because I found the process of coding and actually solving problems with code actually extremely rewarding and something that I genuinely enjoyed doing. And lastly, what is the future outlook and the stability of the career and the skills that you develop with that career? Because if something is just hyped now, I don't think it should be considered a dream job. If there's a good chance that that job and that career is going to disappear in a couple of years and or if that career simply doesn't offer very good stability and a career progression to actually keep that career for the rest of your life. So I will now evaluate software engineering in 2024 using these categories to determine whether it is a dream job. And then at the end, I will give my take on whether I would still consider software engineering a dream job. And if it is something that I would pursue right now, if I was just starting out my career today, starting with the pay. Now it is no secret that tech is still absolutely one of the best paid careers in the world. Now, with that said, there are some huge caveats to this. First of all, the absolutely enormous pay that we often associate with software engineering only really exists in the United States and to some extent in Switzerland. I just made a video on why European tax salaries are actually pretty terrible compared to the US. Now there's many other things to consider there, but just understand that you don't get the crazy US level pay in most countries. Now, again, with that said, in all countries, pretty much, it is still going to be above average compared to all the pays within that country in all other industries. The other caveat is that the pay has definitely decreased now that the job market is more difficult. And this is simple supply and demand, where there's a lot less positions available and a lot more people competing for these fewer positions, companies simply don't have to offer as high salaries to entice people to work for them. And I also made a more detailed video on exactly how big tech salaries are collapsing right now. And specifically, this is related to like the way they offer stock compensation and like some sneaky ways that they're reducing compensation. But basically, what is the say now? Before, the pay was absolutely ridiculous. And today, even with all of those caveats that I just said, it is still 
pretty ridiculous, just slightly less ridiculous than it was before. Second thing is gonna be lifestyle. Now, tech was famous for the amazing perks and all these like lifestyle where you can like work remotely from your laptop by the side of the pool, which led to so many people doing these day the life videos of like, oh, just doing two hours of work a day while chilling at the pool, going to the gym, like eating free food at the company restaurant. Now, mainly this was at the biggest tech companies, the Googles, things like that. But even at the company that I worked for, which was Deloitte, so Deloitte, it was interesting to see that Deloitte has sort of a separate culture for their like tech division, the division that I worked at, compared to the more corporate Deloitte, which is more like consultants and like accounting. Now Deloitte is not a tech company, it's actually a massive company, but the tech division, they literally created a separate culture for it. That was more of this like cool sort of tech lifestyle culture compared to the rest of Deloitte, specifically to appeal to tech workers who knew that they could get access to that lifestyle at other tech companies. So I would say that the lifestyle is still pretty great Right? but it's probably not going to be at the same level. There's been a lot of reports that companies are reducing these perks, again, for a lot of the same reasons as they are reducing the pay. With the supply and demand being more in the company's favor now, they don't have to offer as crazy as perks and they can be more stringent on getting people to work more and things like this. So don't expect the same as it was before. Do expect that you actually have to do work now as a software engineer, as it probably should be. But still, if you compare to the other industries where you can get the same level of salary as tech, like like banking, consulting, law, it's still undeniable that the lifestyle in tech is gonna be much, much better. You're not gonna to have to work 90 hour weeks as a software engineer. Point number three is prestige. Now, again, whether you care about this or not is up to you. The fact is though that most humans, whether we like to admit this or not, do care about it. And there are also benefits to working for prestigious companies. If you have Google, Facebook, Apple on your resume, still to this day, that is going to carry a lot of weight. And people are going to automatically assume that you are more competent if you can say that you work for Google or that you are an ex-Google software engineer or something like that. People literally still use this on YouTube and it works. So for prestige, I don't think the prestige of any of these tech companies has gone down at all. I don't see a reason why it would have. If anything, the prestige might be even higher because now there's just less people who are able to get these jobs. So if you are one of those people, then again, the prestige factor is definitely still there just the same as before. Point number four is rewarding. Is tech a rewarding career? Now this is gonna be entirely subjective. To me, I sort of have very mixed thoughts about this. Like my sort of conclusion on this after working for a big company as a software engineer, as well as working for a startup, as well as building my own projects, is that to me, coding, the skill of coding and building things is extremely rewarding, extremely fulfilling. I absolutely still love coding, but the experience of actually working for a big company, a big corporation as a software engineer was actually much less rewarding. And that was one of the big reasons why I actually left software engineering, at least like corporate software engineering. I'm still a software engineer just doing stuff on my own. I found that coding stuff for a corporation, you're really not like you don't get to have a lot of impact. First of all, you're working on some very small thing, like some very small part of a very, very big machine. You don't really get to see the tangible effect that you're having. Literally some days, my job was just to edit some config files not super rewarding, the people in tech, also not the most interesting people a lot of the time. However, when it came to working on a startup, now this was my own startup, but from what I understand, this applies to also if you're working for a startup, much, much more exciting, you get to have much more impact. Now the barrier is gonna be higher, you're gonna be working much harder, it's gonna be much more difficult, but if you're looking for a rewarding career, I would recommend becoming a software engineer, but perhaps targeting more earlier stage companies, smaller companies with smaller teams, we get to be closer to the actual business and understand how the business works. We actually get to code some like interesting stuff that actually tangibly changes something about the product. Things move much faster. But to me, in terms of coding, the most rewarding thing is always building stuff on my own, which is why that is what I do now because I don't wanna work a job anymore. I wanna build my own things, my own businesses. To me, that is much more rewarding. So for me on this factor is like, meh, but this is entirely subjective. So number five is the future outlook. What is the outlook on tech? Now I'm sure this is gonna incite a lot of discussion in the comments. It's gonna be the people saying, oh, tech is dying, AI is gonna take all programming jobs. I think that is overstated. I don't think AI is gonna take all programming jobs, but it will take some jobs. But really this is nothing new, like tech and coding, like the tools that we use have always been evolving since the first 
programming language was invented. For example, in the early days of web development, all we had was basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but then came JavaScript frameworks that sort of replaced the jobs of basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript programmers. But those programmers then just had to learn these new frameworks, these new tools to be relevant again. I think that is sort of what is gonna happen here again. AI is here to stay. So you as a programmer simply have to learn to use AI and become what I often call an AI-driven developer. Coding as a skill to me will always be in demand, will always be relevant because of the simple fact that technology is how we move forward as humanity and how we build that technology is at its core related to coding. How we code that technology is going to keep changing over time, it's going to become easier, it's going to be faster, but rather than taking away jobs from programmers, I think it will simply create much more technology as we use the same tech coding resources to build much more things much faster. But that's just my take. No one can predict the future. You can look at the facts and make up your own mind. But certainly compared to before, where it seemed like we were in this golden age where nothing can take away coding jobs, coding is just the easiest way to get paid and to get rich fast. Nowadays, the outlook is definitely not as positive as it once was, but at the same time, I don't think it's as negative as a lot of people will make it out to be. So what is my take? Would I still become a software engineer if I was starting over? Now, really, my dream was never any job. My dream was always to be an entrepreneur, to build my own things, and becoming a software engineer was sort of only a stepping stone to building my own businesses with the coding skills that I was gonna learn as a software engineer and things like this. But like I often say, out of all the jobs in the world, despite of the current market, I think software engineering is still the best, if not, is still one of the best, if not the best job out there. But if I was starting my career over and I didn't have a business yet that is successful and I had to get a job to pay the bills, I would certainly get into software engineering, work use the free time that I have as a software engineer because I don't have to work the crazy hours of a banker or something like that to build a side hustle, to build a business, start a YouTube channel or whatever. And once that business succeeds, then I can leave the jobs and I will still have made money and learned one of the most valuable skills in the world, which is coding, which I can then use to build more businesses, things like this. That is exactly what I did. And that is exactly what I would do again if I was starting over. And if your goal is to make money, then also learning to code is still one of the best skills that you can learn. If you want to make money with coding, specifically if you want to make at least $10,000 a month, which I think is a very good goal for anyone to set, there's many different ways that you can do that with coding. If you want to find what these reasons are, I recommend you watch this video right here where I go into detail in all of them. So watch that video next and I'll see you in the next one.